Welcome back to Lamu in Kenya, where we are building a 24 meter recycled plastic sailing now. Uh, now, two videos ago, we went over the process of designing and building a 1.2 meter solar cooker. Uh, and today, we're going to test how well it can, that can actually help us out in building this sailing now. So, the first thing that we needed to try was uh, testing if our solar module could keep our molds hot while we injected a, uh, a rib. And so quite a large plastic part and the whole thing took us seven hours to inject. And here is a little bit of a video of us doing that. Okay, tell me Michael, what's going on here? Okay, we've just gotten back from Nairobi and we've brought back some parts with us. So here you see some of the, uh, the, the metal for our mold. And so this is, this is our rib mold coming together. And this is just one 1.2 meter length of, uh, that will be inserted into this 1.2 meter module and then we'll be able to extend it if this process actually works. What's this? And this will be our keel mold. <laughs> it, it looks big. Okay, what are we looking for? We are looking for a fitting that can allow us to attach the mold uh, to the extruder without us having to rotate the whole mold around the extruder. That would be very annoying, and so this does that. And we got a new spinner! <laughs> processes that we're using uh, in order to reflect and absorb all of the solar energy uh, with our solar module. Uh, so obviously we need a reflective surface here which reflects as much of the light as possible and we need an absorbent material here which absorbs as much of the energy as possible. And so in the first case, uh, just uh, something to get started for testing, uh, we used uh, a, a mirror foil that was just available at the hardware store that we stuck onto the steel sheet, uh, this steel sheet, and we used, we just painted uh, our mold, mold black. It was a high temperature paint, uh, but it was, it's pretty available uh, wherever you look. Uh, now, now we, we've started to uh, test with a specialized material that we were lucky enough to get from uh, Alanod uh, and they sent us these really great uh, reflective materials that are aluminium and they have a special coating on the top that reflects as much of the light as possible uh, and we will be applying today uh, an absorbent material that's a similar uh, aluminium but it has a very absorbent uh, black coating on the top. Uh, and we're going to see how much extra uh, efficiency we get using these specialized materials. But certainly, if your application requires it, uh, you might want to look into these kinds of materials. All right, so another test for extruding into the rib mold here. Um, and today is much more promising because it's uh, honey, nearly no clouds sometimes, but most of the time it's okay. And so the setup is fine and our mold gets hot. Alrighty, nice corners. So here we have the results for our uh, solar heated extrusion test uh, and you can see in our first test where we didn't have so much sun, it was a very cloudy day, you can see that the quality of the surface uh, is much much lower um, and that was because of the temperature of the mould being less than the melting temperature of the plastic uh, and in our second test where we had a much better day, uh, the mould was, was heated uh, a little bit better. Uh, until it got later in the day and you can see where the surface uh, quality uh, decreased. Uh, this shows how the, our, our solar module really made a difference in 
uh, in assisting us in this kind of slow extrusion process uh, and how we can apply uh, that technique, that uh, kind of low-tech te technique, uh, to making the, the bigger parts of the boat, the ones that take a long time to inject. One other thing that you can see here are these little cracks. Uh, and initially when we saw those cracks, we thought they were cracks that formed in the cooling and, uh, and shrinkage of this, uh, this beam. But actually then what we, uh, what we guessed, and uh, we think this is what's happening, is that while the extrusion process is taking place, uh, the outside shell of, of these beams are solidifying and then there's a pressure build up on the inside as more plastic is being injected into the mold which continuously cracks the outside uh, outside layer and um, these cracks are undesirable these cracks can propagate and cause catastrophic failures in the part uh, and so we definitely want to reduce that and where the mold was hot enough uh, the outside layer never had a chance to uh, solidify and so you don't see those cracks forming and so the goal is to keep out keep the molds hot in order to prevent those cracks on the outside of the beam uh, and and this was just a a small scale test with a very small extrusion machine uh, and each of these took seven hours to inject um, but you can see that our process of heating the molds over a long period of time uh, really increases the quality of the parts and will be uh, very useful for us to to make some of those really big parts even though we have a bigger extrusion machine we can inject over a long period of time uh, and some of those really big parts of the boat will take a long time to to, to make we also want to uh, test uh, a process of cutting these beams without creating too many microplastics because if you cut it as if it was wood you're creating all these little microplastics that then go into the environment and are very hard to uh, to collect again. And in this case, we've just scored a line uh, all the way around this beam, and we are dropping that bib, like really big, heavy beam, onto this line uh, in order to uh, split it uh, and, and br yeah, break it instead of saw it away. Wow, it actually worked! <laughs> so our beam looks pretty good on the outside, but what does it look like on the inside? Now that we've cut open our plastic beam, we can directly compare it against the process was, that was used for the flip floppy prototype. Uh, and if you have a close look at uh, the process that was used for the prototype, you can see that there are uh, a lot of these voids, it's quite consistent, but, but there are uh, there is some porosity here. Uh, and if some of this porosity was in a critical area, uh, then we couldn't be absolutely sure uh, that this part wouldn't fail. Now looking at uh, our tests now, uh, you can see that on one of the sections, uh, we have a very good result, uh, and there is very little porosity, uh, and we have uh, plastic everywhere and we have very good fusion and so that's a very good sign that our solar module is working to keep our mold hot and that we can, we can build pressure in order to force all of those voids out and get a really consistent product. Now on some of the sections you can see that, the por that, that we do have uh, an, a kind of unacceptable porosity and this could be for a number of reasons. It could be because we are still using a very small scale extrusion machine uh, and therefore it can't build up enough pressure. But it also could be uh, because of this plastic type, because we had uh, very carefully uh, separated our plastics in order to see where the plastics end up uh, in the final beam to see kind of what's happening. Uh, and we only see this porosity in this kind of dark green uh, plastic so it could also be that as well so we definitely need to do some further tests uh, in order to figure out why that's happening um, and to see if we can get a product that is uh, like this where it's uh, very consistent throughout the whole beam additionally one accidental finding by breaking these pieces rather than cutting them is finding these uh, little bits of metal glass and uh, and shell 
uh, inside the plastic. Uh, and that kind of makes sense as this, pack, this plastic was just collected uh, in nature and on the beach. Uh, and, that, and what that means for the tools is that there is a lot of wear on them. Uh, and in the previous uh, build, building the prototype, it was found that the tools were getting dull very quickly. Uh, and it was thought that it was because of the actual plastic itself. But in fact, uh, there is a good chance it is because of the little bits of metal, uh, glass and shell inside the plastic. And one solution to prevent this is when the plastic is shredded, just to put it in water, um, and all the things that are not HDPE will hopefully sink to the bottom and cause much less wear on the tools as well. And these things can be cut with traditional saws, uh, drill bits uh, and blades without them getting dull as well. Uh, so that's, very, that's one useful finding. Now the other thing we tried is to see if we could reheat these parts up to a temperature where they, we, we could then bend them. Now in this test we weren't able to uh, reach a temperature that was suitable for bending at this scale. So unfortunately the bending uh, via just solar has been disproved. Although that doesn't mean the solar module won't work for anything. It definitely works for keeping our molds hot while we inject our parts. And that's something super valuable because keeping our molds hot is going to be absolutely critical for building some of these really big parts for this boat. Now, in the next video, uh, we're going to go over a little bit the actual physical design of the boat uh, and look into that in a couple of different ways. Uh, we've collaborated also with Newcastle University who did some tests in the water uh, and buoyancy tests and drag tests and this sort of thing. We're also uh, building a, a bit of a model here ourselves as well. Uh, and if you'd like to keep updated with what we're doing here, um, we post regular updates on our Patreon page and that's also a great way to support us as well. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.